All right. How's everybody doing? Uh, made my day to see a few of you waiting uh, for this to start, so thanks so much for that. Um, but if you are joining me for the first time, this is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for hanging out and uh, painting along with me, especially during this time frame right now in the world. Um, painting at home while we're in isolation, while we're in quarantine, is an excellent way to pass the day. All right, so it looks like everything is playing correctly. Uh, let me just refresh that screen to make sure it's coming up. And again, for the picture that is on the, the screen right now that you can see, you've got a few options for getting this on your canvas. And after the end of the video, I will post this traceable on my website. And if you're a first time painter, you can download the traceable and using carbon paper, you can transfer this image to your canvas. And by doing that, it helps as you, um, sorry, it helps you get your kind of composition on there and take away some of the beginning stress. If you do not want to buy the, per uh, the traceable for this, I recommend just pausing the video, drawing what you see on your canvas um, at home, and then following along with the painting. And by doing that, you're increasing your eye-hand coordination. So once you've got your traceable or your image on your canvas, we're going to start painting. And because this is a demo, I'm actually going to lay the ground in first with yellow and green. So that way it gives it some time to dry and I can put flowers on top of this at the end of the demo. So we're going to go in with green for our grass here. Then we're going to move up to the sky. Then we're going to put some water in here and then we'll work on our mountains and then come back to the flowers that will be um, hanging out on top of the grass and overlapping our water. So again, if you're joining me for the first time, thanks so much. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Feel free to check out any of my videos. And for any of my videos on my website, you can use crayons, markers, colored pencils, uh, watercolors, um, acrylic paint like I'm using today. So don't feel like you have to do this with painting. Um, use whatever you have at home and just get creative. So I am using the middle flat brush just because I'm on a smaller canvas. I'm on about an eight by 10 canvas. And we're gonna be doing kind of an equal mixture of green and yellow. Green and yellow kind of make a spring green. So you can adjust it to the shade that you want for your painting. And if you are painting on a larger canvas, maybe grab that larger flat brush. Um, it applies a little bit more paint and just makes your process go a little bit quicker. So again, we're filling in our shade of green to the shade that you like from that kind of smiley face at the bottom, um, going from that line to the bottom of the canvas. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry that color over the sides, the bottom and the top, um, just because it looks nice when you have that color wrap around the edge uh, when you hang this on the wall. Completely optional. And again, just kind of filling in this space with our green paint, our shade of green that you like. And if you're using student grade paint, student grade acrylic paint, you may notice that your paint's kind of thin or a little transparent. Feel free to apply your paint thicker and you'll have a bit more of an opaque coverage or you can apply two coats of it. So adjust what you need to uh, with the materials that you're using at home. All right. And again, this will go fairly quickly just because I am on a smaller panel compared to a few of the other demos, but makes it fun. And if you're watching the replay at home, feel free to pause the video as you need, paint and then pick up the painting again or pick up the video again. All right, so again, I clean that brush off. We're gonna be moving up to the sky and I am gonna have a little bit of kind of like a pastel sunset and then possibly a little bit of a blue sky. So we're gonna start with the lightest color and make sure you get all that green out of your uh, brush because you don't wanna have that mix with your light yellow color. Oh, nice. Hi, Gwen. Thanks for watching from South Carolina. Hope you're doing well and staying safe and healthy. Thanks again for checking this out. All right, so again, I'm mixing, starting with my white, adding, oh, and I still got a little bit of green on my brush, so just gonna wipe that off real quick. So again, that uh, white with a little bit of yellow, and we're gonna be going from this kind of horizon line, pulling our uh, color up towards the top. And I'm kind of holding the brush sideways, 
and just making these little back and forth swaying motions. If you want to make little X marks, feel free to give that a go. And as I've applied some of this on the canvas, I realized I wanted a little bit darker. So I'm grabbing more white and just adjusting my color on the canvas. So if you apply something to the canvas and then realize that, ah, maybe you want to switch it, go ahead and adjust your color. All right. Oh, cool. I'm glad you could catch me live. Janet, thanks. And Jen, thanks for coming back and checking this out. I truly, truly appreciate your guys' support. All right. So again, kind of doing this nice kind of lemony yellow color. I'll do a little bit of pink as it gets towards the top of the canvas. But if you want a blue sky or you want a full on sunset, feel free to make your sky whatever color you may want. And if you are kind of using the same colors that I'm using at home, um, just kind of look and see where I'm applying it and the shape that it's making and just do your best to mimic that at home. It does not have to be exactly like mine. In fact, I actually want it to be different. I want you to add your personality, your style and your kind of flair to your paintings. And then when you do that, and even if you follow along and do exactly what I paint, please email me pictures of what you paint. I can't begin to tell you how excited I get to see your guys' pictures when I'm having my coffee and open my email. So now I've actually moved up to the yellow paint and just making it a little bit darker, giving some kind of popping yellow colors on top of that lemony uh, yellow color that we put on the base, put on first. And it's totally okay to laugh at me. I do tend to trip over my words some days more than others. And I think today is that day. So just enjoy, laugh. If I can get you to think about nothing else except painting for about 30 minutes, I would say that's success. All right, and if you have followed some of my other videos, I do recommend progress photos. And right now would be a good place to take your photo. And again, clean your brush out really good because we're gonna make a light pink to kind of fill up the rest of the sky. And I think I'll just keep with the, the yellow and the light pink in the sky compared to adding some of the blue like I was thinking about earlier. So even if you're painting and you tend to change something because you're inclined or your instincts are pushing you in that direction, do that, go ahead. Uh, when you are being creative, I highly recommend that you trust your instincts. They are generally pushing you in the right direction. So as I make my light pink, I am going super, super light. So a tiny amount of red is going to go a long way. <clears throat> Excuse me. A tiny amount of red is going to go a long way in your mixture to make your pink. And it's easier to start out lighter and add more pigment to it <clears throat> um, compared to starting super dark and trying to backtrack. So again, I'm going to use this to kind of fill up the remaining space in our sky. And I will be overlapping a little bit of the yellow and the lemony yellow. And using light pressure where these two colors meet, you can do a little bit of wet on wet blending. And you may notice that it kind of creates a new shade. It actually will create a slight orangish shade. So just kind of play with that as you're mixing the two colors together. And if you haven't yet already, take a deep breath, relax. Um, I even hold my breath as I'm painting. And now that I've been doing the demos, I find that I'm holding my breath a little bit more because I am kind of nervous, but that's okay. That's part of stepping out of your comfort zone. So when you realize you're holding your breath, no matter what you're doing, just take a moment to stop and inhale and appreciate where you're at. And when you're painting, Really, that makes for a good life, a good day, a good moment. And again, I'm using that light pressure, kind of overlapping where the lemony yellow color and the pink meet, and it is creating this kind of kind of uh, muted orangish color, almost a muted sherberty orange color. All right. And if you need to, you can wipe your brush off as you're doing blending and then go back with that light pressure to do some blending. The more that you paint, the more comfortable this will get. All right, and I am actually gonna add a little bit more red to make it a bit of a darker pink. And just like when we added more of the straight yellow, we're gonna put a few little darker spaces on here. And again, I'm using light pressure, not adding a whole lot of pigment because I'm kind of placing those there. Then we're gonna wipe the brush off and then we'll go back and do that same blending with the light pressure. 
So I do try to kind of, with my videos, build on your skills. So we will do in the same wet on wet blending when we get into the mountains and when we get into uh, the water. And as you are painting, <clears throat> I highly recommend that in the process of painting that you get out of your chair, walk five or 10 feet away and look at your painting from a distance. Um, this is more of the normal viewing distance uh, for things in life and especially for artwork. So look at it from that distance, assess, and then go back and maybe adjust anything that you might need. Also keep in mind that by doing this, you may realize that you actually like your painting more from a distance compared to two feet in front of you and that's okay. Everything in life looks better from a distance. All right, so if you're taking your progress photos, now is another good time. And we're gonna be making a light blue and filling in our water here. So just like with the pink and the light yellow, a tiny amount of blue pigment goes a long way to make your light colors. So start off light and you can always add more pigment. So now we're actually gonna fill this whole space in of this little lake that we're painting. And then we'll do some wet on wet blending with darker blue at the base of the mountain. And again, like I said, if you're using your student grade paint, um, maybe apply your paint a little bit thicker so you have good coverage. And um, for my black outlines here, I did do these with Sharpie markers so that way it was easier for you guys at home to see it. And I am making sure that I cover all of those lines because I don't want those shining through for my final painting. So if you did your transfer and maybe you outlined it with black paint, you can leave that black paint outline or paint over it. Again, totally your call what you want to do with your painting. I'm just thrilled that you're hanging out with me for a little bit, uh, watching the process and hopefully painting on your own. My favorite part about painting is just that the rest of the world ceases to exist for a little bit. And I know everybody's in isolation and quarantine right now, um, but unfortunately, this is kind of my normal world. I do a lot of social distancing naturally just because I enjoy hanging out at my studio and figuring things out um, and working on my own things. So you guys are getting a slight taste of kind of the world that a lot of artists live in. So if your green paint is still wet, be very careful as you kind of come close to that with your light blue color. If you end up getting some green in your lake, um, in your blue color, just wipe it off with a paper towel and then go back and reapply your blue. It is just painting. This is not the end of the world ever. It is a nice escape from the daily life and the craziness of the world. So not bad coming along so at this point once you have your base blue on there again take your progress picture and just like we did in the sky we're gonna wipe the brush off make a little bit of a darker blue and put some shadow areas underneath our mountain and I do want you to go probably about four or five shades darker than what you were just using for your blue and again, I'm going to keep with this kind of horizontal um, back and forth skinny brush stroke. So I'm going to start at the base of the mountains and kind of just put my shadow right underneath each one of them. And then still using that base of the mountain, then we're going to start pulling it towards the bottom of the canvas. And again, just applying it kind of thick on there. Wipe your brush off and then with light pressure, you can soften that darker blue into the lighter blue. And we will do this one more time with a darker blue. If you feel like adding purple or teal into your water, go right ahead. Um, if you're thinking about maybe wanting the sun reflecting onto your water, we will do that after it dries because right now you do not want to add yellow to your blue. Um, and let's see if anybody out there actually knows what color you get when you mix blue and yellow. Leave a comment. <laughs> All right. Got a little bit of green on there, so wiping that off. So now going back in with a little bit darker blue. 
And you could actually even just use that straight blue. That's what I'm going to be getting. Again, starting at the base of the mountain, because if you imagine, that is where the darkest shadow usually is, is where one object's kind of meeting up and touching another object, especially in painting. And again, keep that light pressure, because you'll notice that your, um, your blue will start to diffuse into your background color, into your background lighter blue. And again, I like to wipe the brush off so it takes off any of that extra pigment as I go back in. And again, the more that you do this, the more comfortable and the little groove that you will find with what works for you. And I do recommend taking um, art classes, painting classes from a variety of instructors. Check out the other awesome artists out there doing their own live YouTube demos and step-by-step -step paintings. You may pick up something from a different teacher that makes something that I say makes more sense or vice versa. You may hear me say something that another teacher um, iterated and by hearing it two or three times, it makes more sense and you're cultivating your own knowledge for your own create, uh, creative outlets. All right, so looking good. Um, go ahead, do whatever you want to your water area while your paint's wet. And then we're gonna be moving into the mountains and then we'll be putting some nice uh, hollyhock flowers um, on the bottom of our canvas. We'll be doing those in red. All right, so for the mountains, I'm actually gonna be grabbing that straight blue. We're gonna put it on here kind of thick on each one. Then we're gonna go in with some purple for the shadows and then some light, uh, some white for the highlights. So first gonna put that base on there and I'm grabbing a pretty good chunk of blue. Slap it on there because sometimes when you slap your brush on the canvas, it just feels good. And we need these therapeutic outlets right now. And again, just slap your paint on the canvas feel a little bit better. And if where it's approaching the water, if you want to use a little bit thicker paint because both colors are still wet, but you do want to make sure that your mountain stays a bit more of the darker blue compared to picking up some of those water colors, um, the water lighter blue colors in there. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you have got a lot to share, Janet. Thanks. And yes, green is the correct answer for what you get when you mix blue and yellow. So if you have more to share, um, feel free to add it here in the comments or you can send me an email. Um, if you have pictures that you've painted and you're okay with me posting those on social media, uh, please let me know and I will share that as well because your paintings um, definitely encourage other people to give painting a try. <laughs> I have a, I bet you have come a long way and I'm really, really proud of you. Uh, painting is one of those things that the more you paint, the more you kind of learn about yourself and you realize it's not so scary. And it's one of the few times that we have a visual documentation of how much we learn. So keep your progress pictures from your paintings. And after you've painted for a couple of months or a year or two, go back and look at some of your first ones and you will immediately go, oh, I could do that better right now with what I know. So that's one of the awesome parts about creativity and painting at home. <laughs> and Janet, glad you are sharing um, your painting process and your pictures and your final paintings with your friends. That is awesome. You guys might have to get together and do a virtual paint party. Um, and I'm actually looking into getting those set up. I kind of have it half set up right now on my other website. Um, and we can all paint together from all over the world. Wonderful. All right, so we have now what I call an underpainting. There's no canvas space showing. And this is actually, I don't feel like a painting has begun until I've gotten to this spot. So we're actually going to go back to the mountains and we're going to put some shadows in to help separate the mountain and then we're going to put a highlight on. So do take your brush and I'm sticking with the same middle size brush just because um, I am on the smaller canvas. You don't necessarily have to wash, wa ugh, you don't necessarily have to wash it out since we are just going to purple. But we're going to grab that purple 
And I'm going to start on this mountain on the right hand side and I'll work my way backwards. So even just to kind of distinguish where these two mountains are separating, if you can still kind of see that initial line or just kind of see where I'm placing it and it'll show up a little bit more after we add our highlights. And because I am placing some pretty thick wet paint into wet paint, I'm not moving my brush in a long motion. It's more just kind of like a touching to kind of mix that purple in with the blue, almost like a little pointillism method. And we're gonna do that for the right hand side of this front mountain as well. Sorry, I got a little zoned out. I know I'm used to talking through most of my paintings, but I'm reading comments. Really glad Janet's painting quite a bit, and as well as all of you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got our kind of shadows on there. We're gonna do the shadows on the other side. And same thing to separate the two mountains. The mountain in the back, right above that line, if you can still see it, um, we're gonna be dabbing this purple into it. And again, if you still can't see where that line is, just kind of mimic closest is what you can see I'm doing. Like I said, it does not have to be perfect. And then that front mountain, that bottom left-hand side. All right. And again, we're gonna wipe the brush off and this time we're gonna move into highlights on the opposite side of the mountain and we'll be using white in a very similar manner, but you'll also see how quickly it gets diffused into the blue. Awesome, I'm glad you're painting at least, let's say five times a week. Excellent, excellent. It only gets better and more comfortable. And I'm glad that you're painting with your friends too. Makes me happy. <laughs> All right, so again, cleaning that brush off. I'm actually just gonna grab that straight white and just so I can show you guys how quickly it gets diffused into the blue. So you grab kind of a chunk of white. We're gonna do that same stabbing method. You can see as I'm applying it, it's pretty bright here, but as I start moving into the other mountains, it is picking up that blue and starting to diffuse. So we'll move back to these in a moment. Again, don't necessarily need to wipe your brush off, but keeping with that dabbing method and what it does is kind of is mixing with that color underneath and it's a different way to kind of blend wet on wet paint and kind of you can already tell that with this kind of sharp white right here it's pulling it forward where the purple on the mountain behind it is pushing it back and what you are learning right now is what we call um, kind of the value scale but it's shadow and light the white is your light area and the purple is your shadow and that's how we create this magical illusion on a flat surface. So I forgot to tell all you guys that are painting that you're magicians right now. You're creating the depth, the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. All right, so these mountains actually look pretty good and I kind of like the texture. With the student grade paint, it will start to flatten a little bit just because it's student grade paint. Now we're gonna recreate that same thing on the left-hand side Doing exact same thing, dropping that white on there. And then we're gonna drop some of it on the back of the mountain. And if you do need to go back and grab more white, go right ahead and do that. Most things in art are merely suggestions. So again, adjust to what you need. Again, wipe the brush off and stabbing it in here. This is a good place to take out your frustrations. Anything that's irritating you, any of your anxiety, throw it into your painting. Excellent, excellent outlet. All right, I'm actually gonna kind of adjust the shape of the bottom of this mountain right here, adding a little more purple so it's a bit more of a solid line between um, the mountain and that water. All right. And this can all be a place that we're dreaming of going to since we can't go anywhere right now. So student grade paint is what I recommend for a lot of my first time and beginner painters. 
it is generally a little bit cheaper um, and more transparent. So it's not as solid of color as artist grade paint. Artist grade paint is usually better quality and has a much nicer, thicker, buttery consistency and a bit better opaque coverage. So if you're first starting out, I do recommend that you start with your student grade paint so that way you're not going to break the bank um, as you're discovering if you like this new hobby. And then maybe with one color, when you run out of one color, then jump up and buy the artist grade paint and just see the difference, see what works for you. And there is huge, huge differences between brands of paint. So just because you may like a blue in one brand doesn't mean it's going to be the exact same blue in another brand. So you do always have to kind of adjust um, when you get new supplies. Hopefully that, I think, answered your question. Let me know if there's more. All right, so it looks like my ground's actually pretty dry already, so that's good. It's good planning. Um, before we do that, though, we're going to put a little rising sun in here. And I am going to use the small uh, pointy brush just because it's clean and I don't want to get any other color in it. And we're going to use that white paint and we're going to put a kind of either a setting or a rising sun, whatever you want it to be. And I've found that it's easier when you need to uh, make a circle, place a dot, and then just kind of keep making that dot bigger compared to trying to draw a perfect circle. And if your sun ends up growing a little bit bigger than you wanted, that's okay. It just means it wanted to be a little bit more prominent in your painting. All right. No problem. And also kind of another note on the supplies. Um, I'm not sure if it's in the description box. I will check once this is over, but I do have uh, links to supply kits. So that way, if you're not quite sure what I use in a painting, um, especially for my other videos, scroll down, look for the material or the kit, and it'll go through all the supplies that I use. All right, so I'm going to move back up to that middle flat brush, and we're going to move into kind of putting hollyhocks in here. So I'm actually going to make these red, but if you want to make yours purple, if you want to make them pink, if you want to make them other multiple different colors, feel free to do that. We are going to go pretty good size here and then they're gonna get a little bit smaller as they move up the canvas. And what I like to do, again, just using the straight red, but if you wanna use a different color, go right ahead. I'm gonna basically make four overlapping circles, and I want you to think of them as blobs. Everybody can paint a blob. And if you're painting a blob that looks like a flower, people are gonna go, oh, what a pretty flower. They don't usually go, oh, what a beautiful blob unless they watch the video and know that that's what I call them. <laughs> so, but we will put some details. We'll put a center in and then a few little highlights. But I am starting with the bigger ones at the bottom, and then we'll go a little bit smaller as we kind of move up, kind of thinking about the way hollyhocks grow on that nice stalk. And as you get into the smaller ones, if you need to move down to a smaller brush, go right ahead and do that. And as I get into even smaller dots, they're literally just gonna be dots with the width of my brush. You don't have to get those little circles in there. If you're inclined to put a different type of flower here, if you wanna do hibiscus, something totally different, go right ahead. And if any of your paint is still wet as you're overlapping the color, don't use as much pressure with your brush and basically just kind of place the paint on top of it. I'm gonna have this one to where it kind of is going off the edge of the canvas. All right, and again, remember to breathe. I just realized I was holding my breath again. Laugh at yourself a little bit. And then maybe just take a note of like how often you do hold your breath. Do you hold your breath doing other things? All right, I'm gonna imagine that we even have a few kind of hanging out in the background, further away from our foreground. And again, remember to step away from your canvas, observe it from a distance and see what you're liking or not liking. And then you can kind of come back and adjust what you need. Art is never, ever, ever about being picture perfect. 
but it is about doing maybe a little bit better or learning something new compared to the last time that you painted. And be kind to yourself. We are way too judgmental to begin with and judgment is not needed when you are a beginner painter. So just the fact that you're painting already makes you successful. All right, so I'm gonna move down to that small pointy brush and we're gonna kind of give an illusion that we have some highlights happening on our flowers. And I will be wiping the brush off and grabbing more paint, um, usually probably after two or three uh, marks that I'm gonna make. So again, imagining that we've got a couple of flowers turning in towards the center with these little curly cues, almost just imagining that this white highlight is mimicking the shape of each of the flower petals. We will put a darker dot, purple dot in the center. And again, it's just an impression of a highlight to break up the space. It's not exactly where the highlight goes and we are not painting photorealistic. If we were, this would not be a 30 minute demo for me. <laughs> but again, so this is just giving the illusion of where the light is coming from. Don't think about it too much. I do notice a lot of my students tend to overthink, especially towards the end. And again, remember that distance, look at it from four, uh, five to 10 feet away, and then you're like, okay, not so bad. All right, so an opposite way to use a tool, and I like to kind of push you out of your comfort zone. Um, we can actually use this brush, and we're gonna use the back end of it because they make nice little dots. So I'm gonna use the purple just because it's darker, using the end of the brush, and just in the center of each of these little hollyhocks, I'm gonna put a purple dot to kind of indicate this is where the petals are moving towards or kind of coming out from. And like I said earlier, just to get you guys using your tools in an unexpected manner. So check out a few of the other demos that I've done this week. I've painted with a palette knife and I've done a scraping method for the palette knife, which is more traditional of the artwork I do as an artist. And if you'd like to check out my artwork, um, lovejoycreations.com and go to my portfolio and you can see a lot of my palette knife paintings. Uh, hi, Tammy, thanks for joining us. Oh, I hope you're able to get past this block. Don't think too much and picture yourself as being a five-year-old kid and you're just in art class. You're an adult kindergartner. Um, and don't overanalyze your process too much. Easier said than done, I completely understand. And yes, I agree, I'm sure your friend will love it. And just the fact that we take time out of our days to be creative and then pass on those paintings to our friends, um, that really means a lot to people. So don't be scared to give your paintings to your friends um, just because it's a nice gesture and I love that adults are making handmade gifts again. All right, so let's see, I think we are almost done. Um, I actually wanna kind of break up this green space. So I'm gonna start with the yellow and kind of keep it a bit more in the yellow, but adding a touch of green so it's just lighter. And again, we were working with like these quick, kind of funny little brush strokes to so just kind of dab them on there. Be very careful so you don't get the red into it. We probably could have, see, and I got the red in there just as I was saying something. Probably could have done this a little bit earlier, but you know, sometimes that's the way things go. If you wanna kind of change that up, grab a little bit of the green, slap it in there, and you can imagine that this is just giving more depth to our ground here. And I'm not really moving it. These are basically just dots using the width of the brush to apply these. And again, just breaks up the space. Completely optional. You do not have to do this if you do not feel like it. All right, so not bad for a little 30 minute painting. And I'm really glad that you guys joined me. F please feel free to catch it on the replay. Any questions, leave comments, anything you might want me to paint in the future, 
let me know. Um, I do kind of have a list already for next week with a few of the suggestions that people have sent out. And I believe tomorrow is Van Gogh's birthday. So I will be doing the um, Starry Night with a palette knife and a brush. So check that out tomorrow at 11 o'clock or check it out on the replay. Um, again, plenty of links down in the description box below and I will add more to kind of uh, about what we talked about today. Feel free to check any of those out, check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel. If you feel like financially supporting or helping Paint with Lovejoy, check out my Patreon page and for $2, $5 or more, um, you can kind of help continue to fund Paint with Lovejoy so I make more videos. Um, but just by watching the videos, huge, huge help. Share this with your friends um, and family, especially during this time. Uh, my email is paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Or you can leave a comment here and I will reply to them as well. So I think that takes care of it. Thank you guys so much for joining me um, and watching all the way along. This is really helping me launch more of uh, doing my online classes and my online school. So have a great day and I will see everybody tomorrow. Cheers.